while everyone else was losing their mind over the new Rune of Sanctuary and Abrasive of Grit changes, I found a hidden gem, or I guess I should say a hidden chalice since I'm talking about aristocracy runes. Aristocracy runes give you five stacks of might when you apply weakness on a one second ICD and you can put this to good use by combining it with the always obligatory blighter's boon for sustain and then furthermore adding your favorite sources of weakness, a dash of boon corrupt and then you just win the game. With Blighter's Boon, Aristocracy Runes are effectively giving you 5% life force every time you apply weakness. This adds up to a truly impressive amount of life force generation that allows you to run a Spike Curses build while still retaining life force generation that is better than all other conventional builds. The fact that these runes allow for Spike Curses to be run without sacrificing sustain is of extreme importance because Spike Curses is the holy grail of necromancer offensive builds. Spike Curses combines both an extreme amount of corruption and some light condi application with the heavy power damage and procs of Spite. Together it results in an offensive package that both completely shuts an enemy down with extreme debuffing and boon rip while also putting out pretty heavy damage. I've been playing this build kind of like a power version of the old Procmancer build from the Heart of Thorns era, where you use the Shroud Entry procs as your primary source of surprise burst. This is particularly useful in this meta since Shroud Entry procs are all instant, and a lot of classes these days are packing a lot of evasion, so having that instant damage is really important. Basically, the way it's working is you enter Shroud and Spiteful Spirit goes off with its power damage and double cor corrupt. And then you've got your weakening Shroud proc, which is applying Bleeding Weakness and Corrupts a Boon. And then on top of this, you've got Plague Sending, which applies or transfers two conditions on your first strike after entering Shroud, which would in this case be Spiteful Spirit or Weakening Shroud, depending on which one hits first. And then I also have been taking Doom Sigils, which apply poison on your next attack after weapon swapping, and entering Shroud counts as a weapon swap. So basically you enter Shroud with this build, and anyone near you gets hit with Spiteful Spirit, Weakening Shroud, uh, Plague Sending, and Doom Sigils, which is just an absolutely massive Condi Bomb. Now granted, this is a power build, so I don't have a ton of Condi damage, but between... The condition damage from aristocracy runes, which are a condition damage major, and the condition damage I gain from target the weak minor trait in curses, you end up with a base of 441 condition damage, and when you combine that with the 25 stacks of might that you will have more or less all the time, because this build does have a ton of might generation, you end up having slightly over a thousand condition damage which is on par with a Deadshot Amulet, which means those uh, Boon Corrupts and the Condition Transfers are actually somewhat dangerous in this build, particularly if you can get a Condition Transfer on a high damage condition. So, like, if you're maybe fighting a Scourge and you transfer their Torment and Burning back to them, you can actually hit someone pretty hard with those Condies in addition to all the power damage you're doing, and that can be quite nasty. You could also stack uh, around 6 to 7 bleeds by using RS2 in melee range because RS2 has a bunch of little tiny hits in it. And you do have that minor trait in curses that applies bleeding on crit. And this build does have a really high crit chance from all the crit bonuses and curses. So you can actually, by using high strike rate skills like RS2, you can stack bleeds fairly quick just from that minor trait. And granted, I mean, since we only have like a thousand condition damage, these bleeds aren't going to like blow anyone's head off, but it's a pretty substantial amount of bonus damage that your opponent does have to deal with. So it makes the build just that much harder to deal with. And it's nearly impossible for most classes to clear the amount of debuff and damaging conditions that this build puts out. I mean, you'll see in this video some pretty massive six to seven condition just bursts and while yes most of these conditions are debuffs and not damaging ones i mean the fact that they're debuffs in a way is worse because it means the opponent they can't really do anything and you know they're chilled and crippled you know they're weakened and they're blinded maybe 
So it just completely shuts your opponent down and prevents them from doing anything. And then you combine that with the power damage it puts out and it actually results in a Necromancer build that is extremely effective even without a support. And that's what I love the most about this build is I've actually been getting really good results without a support in 1v1s and 2v2s, even in team fights, because it's just so oppressive in how much debuffing power it has combined with the power damage and while it's not the highest damage necro build you could run in terms of raw damage output you know it's nowhere near like an onslaught reaper but the damage it does put out it's very consistent it's reliable there's no rng to it really particularly given how high the crit rate is on a curses build so you pretty much always crit both in and out of shroud i mean it's just performs so well like i've been so satisfied with this build even in this meta and that's particularly surprising because i mean this isn't the most friendly build or sorry not build the most friendly meta for a reaper you know you still have scourges roaming around you've got a longbow soul beast everywhere you've got dead eye thieves you know, for a Reaper that's solo queuing, at least, it's not very good. I mean, yeah, you can go take an Onslaught Reaper and duo queue with a Firebrand, but, you know, for the vast majority of people in this game that don't duo queue with Firebrands, this build is basically, like, the holy grail of solo queuing Necro builds. Like, the performance increase was, like, immediately noticeable, and that was even before I started, like, tweaking the traits and utility selections to optimize the build. Simply put, if you're solo queuing without a firebrand, like this is the only real option as far as I'm concerned. I don't really know of any other builds you could run on a Reaper or even Necro in general that would get better results than this in a solo queue environment. You'll be able to find a link to the full build with all of the traits, sigils, and all that good stuff in the description for the video.